welcome to Career Center. I am Kimberly White, Executive Director of the Community Career Center, a resource center located in Naperville for people in career transition. If you're unemployed, underemployed, or seeking a career change, this show is for you. Career Center will bring human resource professionals and other experts together to provide job search tips to you as you search for your next success. Joining me today is Jamie Sidwell. Jamie, thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome. Jamie is a career coach and recruiter for Progressive Link. Mm -hmm. So Jamie, tell me a little bit about yourself and about Progressive Link. Okay. I have been doing um, recruiting and career coaching for about 25 years. Okay. Um, All in the Naperville area? Mostly, mostly in the Midwest. Okay. I've been working out of the Naperville area. But uh, Progressive Link is a recruiting firm. We do supply chain recruiting for okay. manufacturing and distribution companies. Okay. We also do a lot of individual career coaching and teamwork, like leadership development and executive coaching. And what industry do you focus on? Are you? Doesn't matter what industry, okay. as long as they're manufacturing or, or distribution. distribution. Okay. So, Jamie, um, when job searching, there are so many ways to go about it. Um, what activities have you found have the highest rate of success? Well, contrary to what I think can people believe all the time is that online applications work really well. Mm. And that's actually about a 2% success rate. So the way uh, when we talk about how a job seeker should go about it, it's just like any investment of time and resource. Mm -hmm. It would be like a diversified portfolio. So networking is a good. Huge. Um, a good way to go about it, letting friends and family and just everybody know what you're looking for, mm -hmm. getting the word mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. um, some online application is okay, but again, it's a 2% success rate. Right. And then one of the best ways is actually making calls, having somebody hand deliver your resume to a hiring, hiring manager, manager, and actually having the conversation, just how could I help you? Right. Because it's gonna be somebody that has a need and like has skin in the game right. in an office that sees your value. Right. So that kind of goes back to your first point about networking and um, how do you how do you um, encourage someone who may feel a little more hesitant about doing that reach out, asking people for help? How do you encourage them to do that? Well, it's not an easy thing for a lot of people, mm -hmm. really. Uh, Every time I say, you know, you need to make those calls yourself, I hear these deep sighs. <laughs> How do I do that? Uh -huh. yeah. But um, a lot of times it's just about asking for a little bit of help. I mm -hmm. mean, if you ask your friends and neighbors, that's pretty simple for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, you can ask them maybe to hand deliver a resume. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the networking groups can teach you. Right. Um, how Creating to that that, um, that thirty second spiel or ninety second elevator, spiel. Pitch, yeah, elevator if pitch, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, practicing a little bit in front of the mirror. You know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe making some warm calls on some referrals mm. so that you have like a name, say, you know, I was right. referred to you by so-and-so right. instead of just making it a cold call. Right. And then when you talk about the, the online job search having a 2% success rate, again, there are people who believe I should just apply to a gazillion jobs, get online and do it. Mm -hmm. But no. It's just a popular misconception. Mm -hmm. What's happening is we're applying into portals. Those portals are getting 500 to 1,500 mm -hmm. uh, resumes overnight. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you may pop up in a keyword search, but chances are you don't. And there's no uh, personal connection to that. Right. And so a lot of times you're not even found in that right. portal. Right. Um, okay, so there are a lot of misconceptions um, in job search today that's, that can be hard to navigate. What are some that you've experienced or you're aware of? Mm -hmm. So some of them that we talked about, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. online portal, mm -hmm. that that would actually right. uh, be beneficial. But some of it uh, that I hear all the time when I talk to candidates is that um, posting your resume out mm -hmm. there, in the fine print after posting your resume, it does say that anybody can use that resume mm -hmm. for any purpose. Mm -hmm. So they can use it for a training purpose of their mm -hmm. own. Yeah. Um, they can take it and blast it out to all mm -hmm. sorts of clients and right. represent you. So it's really uh, about protecting yourself when you're right. out there in the job search right. and making sure that you know who's representing you, right. making sure that you know where you're presenting right. yourself. Yeah, I like to tell clients when you see, when, if you Google a sample resume for any industry, if you will, um, you'll see a gazillion resumes that come up that someone has posted somewhere and now it's part of a sample 
yeah. resume. Yeah. And they can use them for good or bad, yeah, right? Yeah, for good or bad. So you got to really be, be protective of that. Um, okay, so another thing that you, you know, we've talked about is job seekers have rights. Tell me, what, what do you mean by that? Job seekers have rights. A lot of times when we're seeking job and we're the candidate, mm -hmm. we don't feel like we have the right to ask questions or the right to dig into some of the things that we see as maybe loopholes in the company, mm -hmm. as we see as inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. um, you can ask them about their uh, stability, mm -hmm. reasons for turnover. Mm -hmm. um, if you see something that's that doesn't appear to sit right with you, we do have the right as a job seeker to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. And I think so often job seekers um, feel desperate right. and they want to make a good impression that they feel um, uncomfortable asking some of the tougher questions. Yeah. Do you think asking, are there any specific ones, I guess I should ask you, um, that people shouldn't ask because it may hurt them? Uh, I think that's on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. I, I think you got to use your best judgment. Right. Um, I think as long as it's a genuine question mm -hmm. and as long as it's uh, professional, right. you know, that, that you should ask. I have so many people that um, are afraid to ask the questions in the interview. They'll come back and ask me. Right. And I really want them to uh, get a little bit more comfortable in asking those up front to make sure that they have accurate information by which right. they can make a decision if they want to work for the right. company. Right. Um, what is onboarding and why is that important? Onboarding is when a candidate is starting a new position, an employee is starting mm -hmm. a new position, and it's about the orientation to the company and the position. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's so important with onboarding is how you get acclimated to mm -hmm. that company. Do you have the proper resources? Are you meeting the proper people? Um, that is so important because if you miss that, if you're not getting the information you need to do your job, if mm -hmm. you don't know who to contact and mm -hmm. who, to, who to talk to, mm -hmm. you can really uh, find yourself not being able to accomplish your goals. Right, right. Okay, so we have about a minute left, so I just want to, I know you're a career coach and recruiter, and career coaches are, you know, they're out there. They're important in many aspects. Can you, you know, expand, expand on that a little bit? What career coaches do or just? Yeah, like what do they do and why, why is it important to have one? Um, it, career co coaches can add clarity for mm -hmm. you. They can help you kind of uncover what it is that maybe your strengths, mm -hmm. maybe it is that the place where you fit best, I think. I think they just help you find the value in yourself so that you can go out and use your strengths right. and your skills. Right, great. Well, Jamie, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you joining me. Your company is Progressive Link, mm -hmm. career coach and recruiter, Jamie Sidwell. Thank, thank you, you so much. Mm -hmm. Up next, we will be talking about careers in the health industry with Troy West, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Career Center. I am Kimberly White, Executive Director of the Community Career Center. Joining me now is Troy West. Troy is a Talent Acquisition Specialist with CLO Consulting. Did I say yes, that right? Yes, you sure did. Great, good. Troy, thank you so much for coming. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about CLO? CLO is what um, is called a recruitment process outsourcing. And what we do is we partner with various clients um, from healthcare, to technical, to manufacture, and we partner with these organizations in terms of streamlining processes and for recruitment, uh, benefits, and what we do is develop uh, more of a, a streamlined, as I said, process and come up with a strategy to uh, capture the best talent 
out that's out there for applicants okay. or people who are applying for positions. Now, where are they headquartered? They are Brookfield, Wisconsin, is the headquarters. But you work here, and you're in the Chicago land area, and you do hiring for the Chicago land area. Correct. I um, work remote. Right. Um, and I uh, do the outsourcing for the big, largest actually mm -hmm. healthcare system in the state of Illinois. Are you allowed to say who that is or no? Yes, Presence Healthcare. That's what I, I knew that, but yes. I wanted to put it out there. All right, so um, talk to me about hiring trends. What are the, some of the hiring trends that you are seeing? Some of the hiring trends is in terms of healthcare mm -hmm. that we are seeing are nurse shortages mm -hmm. uh, due to a lot of uh, nurses um, and turnover. They're not leaving organizations. Mm -hmm. um, New grads, it's very difficult for them to get hired because mm -hmm. healthcare or the hospitals want experienced Experience. nurses. Mm -hmm. So consequently, what you know, healthcare is doing now with the Healthcare Reform Act, mm -hmm. they are uh, providing more tuition reimbursement, more training and development for the new grads. When if they do hire new grads, they position them with what they call a preceptor okay. to kind of guide and, and, and coach them to be more of an experienced nurse. Okay. So how does one go about getting their resume notice when you say that you guys have, you know, these shortages, but there's clearly jobs out there. So how does, how does one go about getting their, their resume notice with you all? Well, for, my, the first thing I say is just networking, mm -hmm. networking. Um, uh, if you are a nurse and you're a new grad looking in the field, mm -hmm. um, the key thing is to you know, if you're just sitting stagnant, not doing mm -hmm. anything, go to a nursing home, work mm -hmm. with a nursing home, and okay. just develop a relationship. There's affiliations um, that so you be can be part, part of. of and organizations and affiliations. Absolutely. And volunteering. Absolutely. And volunteering is key as well mm -hmm. um, within a healthcare sector. So. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you guys hire other than just nurses. You, you, you're kind of the... Gamut. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. We hire from nursing to housekeeping to clinical aid, director level mm -hmm. positions, director of uh, quality assurance, okay. and even executive level positions. Okay, so you do recruiting for all. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about interviewing. What are some of the do's and don'ts that you've uh, experienced or you've seen when someone's going through that interviewing process? Okay. Um, some of the do's I did, uh, I've noticed or I've encountered is that the applicant may show up like an hour and a half early. Okay. You know, you always, the applicant, I tell them that, you know, 15 to 20 minutes early mm -hmm. and just kind of prepare yourself. Right. Um, of course, dress professionally, mm -hmm. uh, dress no clone, right. you know, loud clone, yeah. or just be very conservative. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of don'ts, you know, you never want to uh, be insistent or be persistent. Mm -hmm. um, professional at all times, mm -hmm. um, and just be yourself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, be confident in your answers. Mm -hmm. uh, be pre concise and mm -hmm. precise. And right. answer, pay attention and listen to the, the question, question that's before asked. You, yes, yeah. yes. And do your research. Make sure you've done your research sure. on the Absolutely. Company. And that's one of the uh, key questions I ask when I right. do a phone interview. Right. Can you tell me about yeah. presence? Yeah. You know, and I get a lot that say, no, I can't. And I, kind of coach them and and, right. and, and and train them on. You always want to make sure that you do some research on the right. company because the hiring manager is going to want to know. You know yeah, if it's you always did. going to be a tricky question that may come up. Absolutely. So make sure you Absolutely. know that. All right, so they've gotten their resume noticed by you all. They've gone through the interview process. I'm assuming it's probably a panel of some sort maybe that they've gone through, talked to a couple people. Um, thank you notes. Is it? Are they effective? Should people do them? If you're interviewing with a number of people, do you send a thank you note to every person? Okay. Uh, thank you notes are effective. It lets mm -hmm. you know that you are very interested in mm -hmm. the position. Uh, in terms of uh, to who you need to send the thank you notes to, uh, probably the recruiter and mm -hmm. then the hiring manager. Not necessarily if it's a panel. Mm -hmm. um, um, you don't have to. Some have, mm -hmm. which is okay. But um, the recruiter and the hiring, the specific hiring manager would mm -hmm. be great. And you want to do that within immediately, you know, after the interview. Right, right. Okay. Um, one of the questions that I asked, I know our, our guest before, is about um, questions job seekers should ask or not ask or should, should avoid. What are your thoughts on, you know, what are some questions that you think they should ask or not ask? Okay. Well, in terms of asking, um, you always want to ask um, in terms of a manager's, their mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. you know, what's the culture? Mm -hmm. uh, 
in terms of profitability, mm -hmm. you know, advancement opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are questions that you want to ask. Questions you don't want to ask are in an initial interview, how much is the pay? Yeah. So don't you know, ask don't, that at don't all. Don't ask that. Because there's always this rule of right, thumb. Right. Yes, should I the, not? You know, yeah. um, you know, because if the person that, on the other end actually knows that that's ex important, exactly, they know you exactly, want to know that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, at that point, you know, usually at the offer, you know, mm -hmm. that's when the salary is discussed. But uh, you want to kind of shy away from that. Mm -hmm. You want to shy away from if you're asked about, you know, your prior employer not mm -hmm. saying anything negative mm -hmm. about your prior employer. Right. Or something. Right. Um, when someone, so once someone is hired, what makes them successful? What makes them successful, number one, is them themselves mm -hmm. taking advantage of uh, the uh, you know, curriculum that's provided, mm -hmm. training and mm -hmm. development, and you know, just being um, taking initiative mm -hmm. in terms of opportunities and, and you know, approaching your manager, being comfortable and asking your manager what opportunities are there, how do I get to this mm -hmm. you know, particular uh, advancement New opportunity, level. yes. Right. And then what about unsuccessful? Unsuccessful if you're not, you know, uh, one who is, um, you know, take initiative, mm -hmm. you don't perform well, um, consequently you're not going to be successful. And, and adapt, be able to adapt to change. If you're right. not able to adapt to change, then you won't be successful. Right. All right, so as we wrap up, um, what advice would you provide regarding um, advancement and or promotion opportunities? I would advise to get to know each and every manager mm -hmm. and, 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 and volunteer within the organization mm -hmm. if they have a uh, you know need for someone to do this. Be the one to step up. And, okay. and get noticed by the right. managers. So and, volunteering by, you know, serving on the social committee or th some things outside of your normal absolutely, work role. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, great. Troy, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, joining me today. Thank you. Up next, Rita Byrne Frederick, a current job seeker at the Community Career Center. <laughs> Good things happen at the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County. Experience more than 25,000 acres where native plants and animals make their home. Discover the scenic beauty of over 60 forest preserves containing forests, prairies, and wetlands. Explore the wonder of changing seasons along 145 miles of trails. Get outside and discover the good things that happen when you visit DuPage Forest Preserves. The Forest Preserve District of DuPage County, where good things happen. Today, more than ever before, women are on the front lines of America's defense. These brave women struggle and sacrifice to help keep our country secure. They deserve to be recognized for their service as guardians of freedom. Please support the American Legion's efforts to serve the growing number of women veterans. Go to legion.org slash honor veterans to find out how you can help. Welcome back. Joining me now is Rita Byrne Frederick. Rita is a current Community Career Center job seeker, uh, training and development professional, and customer service uh, professional. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. Great. Thanks Good. for having me. So, Rita, tell me a little bit about yourself. You've worked training and development and customer service. Can I elaborate a little bit on that? Correct. Um, I've got 20 some odd years of experience um, in supply chain, customer service, um, management, um, primarily in roles that involve training and development, um, process streamlining, um, mergers and acquisitions, been doing a little bit of everything, um, not just the typical order management mm -hmm. type of position. Mm -hmm. So describe how your experience goes beyond the typical customer service, order management, and complaints. The, the, role, the roles that I've had, um, and I um, strive to attain are those that get me involved within the organization overall, not just order management, not just complaint handling. Those mm -hmm. go hand in hand with the role. Right. It's more of um, engaging with the customer, the client, um, engaging with other folks within the organization and bringing a customer focus throughout the whole organization. Mm -hmm. that, that's where I 
thrive, and that's where I mm -hmm. bring my expertise, is making sure the customer's voice is heard throughout the whole organization. Mm -hmm. So whether it's streamlining a process and partnering with the accounts or the customer in, in senior level or you know folks mm -hmm. within these organizations, mm -hmm. better understanding what their needs are, and help. Perhaps it's you know a product change. Perhaps it's a process change. That's where my role comes Your in. Your role comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know that you're at the center quite a bit, and you're doing some great job. You know, in your networking, how are you networking? What are some of the things that you're doing that you can share with you know other job seekers out sure, there? Sure, sure. Um, I've done everything from um, telling everyone that I know and feeling uh, comfortable doing that. Yeah, you know, it, it is awkward. Mm -hmm. it, it's you know, it's you know, an ego thing. Mm -hmm. You have to get beyond that. Um, I've shared uh, just through email, blasting out there like, "Hey, I'm looking, and this mm -hmm. is where I'm targeting." Sharing my handbill. Um, speaking on the baseball field, when you were at the parents yeah. in the corner, it, for case in point, uh, for example, I spoke with one of the dads on our baseball team who happened to have a neighbor who's a VP at a company I was targeting. Perfect. You never know. You never so know. So you have to be open to sharing those. Um, staying in touch with organizations that I participated in as mm -hmm. I was employed. Mm -hmm. Staying in touch with those folks, um, participating in events, attending events, um, staying connected with the folks that I previously contacted. Mm -hmm. Um, and there may be situations where you can't afford the membership anymore. Right. Letting them know that. Right. I, I particularly have an organization that I participated in, let them know what was going on. Right. They gave me a free membership for a year wow. just to stay in touch. Right. And so stay utilizing abreast. those connections mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. much as you can. Definitely. LinkedIn? LinkedIn is uh, my <laughs> Bible, so yeah. to speak. Um, definitely stay on top of that, making sure my connections continue mm -hmm. to increase. Um, I, I actually call it data mining because okay. I will follow companies that I'm targeting. Mm -hmm. And even if I don't know someone there, I look at who's currently employed there and I will find that there are some folks that we have mutual connections mm -hmm. and I drill down on those to see. And interestingly, I found a friend who I've known for years who knew somebody at that company who happened to be a vice president right. and landed me an interview. Right. So unless I had gone to that level, I would have never known they were connected and yeah. could help me out with that. What are some of your other connections on LinkedIn? I mean, are you connected with like your your grad your school where you went to mm -hmm. college? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the yeah. other professional organizations, just groups within the industries mm -hmm. that um, I'm targeting or mm -hmm. have participated in? Um, groups I volunteered with, my church group. Mm -hmm. um, uh, variety of companies, industries, um, individuals that I know I look at what groups they belong to. Right. It's and like I latch onto those. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really just not going in with blinders on. You have to be kind open. Of yeah. Expand. Mm -hmm. um, have you been contacted uh, from a company or any you know or organization regarding a position? A job, you know, through through LinkedIn. Have you? I've I've had several um, companies contact me mm -hmm. specifically through LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, and they said they just came up on a search, yeah. and that's how it came to be. I've had other folks who um, called me based on recommendations from someone else I was connected with, mm -hmm. so they looked me up on LinkedIn to see if it was a match, and then they reached out to me as well. So it's a combination of those referrals okay. and contacts versus someone that's doing a blind search. Yeah, LinkedIn is so important. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier your mm -hmm. handbill, and I don't know, I mean, they probably, I don't know if they'll be able to see this, but you have the most impressive handbill that I've seen. I, I just, I Thank love you. this. Thank I absolutely you. love it. Um, so what are some of the specific strategies that you use in your job search, job search strategies that you've used? Um, I, the key part is getting up like I'm going to a job. Mm -hmm. that, that's the biggest thing is getting up. Do you find that? Hard? Have you found that hard to do? Or um, initially, I was uh, you know yeah. you, you are somewhat depressed in the yeah. beginning when yeah. you're getting your momentum up. But um, once you get beyond that, you do you come up with your plan just like you're going to a job. Uh -huh. You you have daily goals. You have weekly goals that you have to meet. You have a schedule that you have to follow. So uh -huh. you incorporate it. You know you make you know set meetings yeah. where people you want to network with. Uh -huh. So you do. It's a full time job looking yeah. for your full time yeah. job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you said daily goals and weekly goals. What mm -hmm. are some of your daily goals? What's number of folks I want to reach out okay. to? Mm -hmm. um, number of contacts or initial contacts, perhaps, mm -hmm. um, cold calling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a combination Which of those mentioned things. earlier mm -hmm. from one of our guests, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, weekly goals would be the follow-ups, you know, to some, perhaps an organization that I had already contacted mm -hmm. and hadn't heard back from. Mm -hmm. Those I typically tailor toward the end of the week, but the daily ones are my initial 
communications. Yeah. And those could change exactly. each day depending mm -hmm. on kind of what's mm -hmm. going on. Exactly. Um, so we all know job search, it's, it's a full-time job, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, and can be very stressful. How, how are you balancing that with, you know, everyday life? How mm -hmm. are you balancing your job search? Because you're not doing it 20, you know, 20 hours a day. You're it seems like it at times. Yeah, sometimes it seems like it. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there are some tough days. It's not easy, but you have to really get the mindset that, you know, it's going to happen. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of when. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that uh, you stay balanced in your spirituality. You know, mm -hmm. my church has been huge as mm -hmm. far as staying connected. Um, my small group, we stay mm -hmm. connected and mm -hmm. talk all the time. Um, actually getting up and <laughs> having some fun, scheduling some fun time for yourself. Which we talk about at the center, actually. Yeah, yeah you got to do um, that. I actually, Joy, yeah. through our job Joy, club, Joy had mm -hmm. mentioned it to me. And it's almost like you have to give yourself permission to have fun because mm -hmm. you're, you're so determined to get it, land a job right. that you forget to right. have that balance. Um, and also just reading, mm. you know, not just focus on getting the job, but staying relevant, yeah. you know, with your role that you're looking for, or the company that you want to get into, or the industry itself is mm -hmm. just staying current with what's going on. Right. And so I know you in your, your handbill speaks to like target positions and location and companies, but what about industries? You're, you have a kind of a... Um... My, my background is primarily consumer package okay. goods for okay. uh, manufacturers, um, but it's not limited to that because my skills are fairly transferable. Transferable, absolutely. Yeah, Great so um, mid to small size companies would be ideal mm -hmm. within the DuPage to Will County areas. Um, again, manufacturing has been my background mm -hmm. by nature. It just happened to, to right. be that way. Um, but I could you know, easily transfer into some other mm -hmm. industries as well. Right, and I know you've been coming to the Career Center and we're almost out of time, but um, tell me a little bit about how that has helped you. What are some of the things? Oh, it, it's been tremendous. Um, I wish I would have found it sooner. Um, key things for me have been participating in the workshops. Mm -hmm. um, I learned about the leave behinds. Yeah. I hadn't done that. And I actually had two folks that interviewed me thank me yeah. for bringing that because wow. they were really impressed Very by good. it. But the networking yeah. and really keeping your head straight and making sure that, you know, right. you're on target. Great. It's well, been great. Thank you so sure. much, Rita. I appreciate it. A great, great training and development, customer service professional. If you're looking for one, give us a call at the center. Um, I also want to thank Troy West and Jamie Sidwell for being a part of this month's edition of Career Center. If you're unemployed, underemployed, or seeking a career change, please visit us at the Community Career Center, 1815 West Steel Road, Suite 900, in Naperville, or give us a call at 630-961-5665. Thanks for watching.